And if you just give us one second, we will start with David Charles. Go ahead, David. Cheers, Danny. Hi, Owen. How are you? Good, thanks, David. Excellent. Uh, you given, I gave David uh, a lot of confidence uh, before play today, and he's shown what he's capable of opening the baton, so he must be pleased with that. Yeah, uh, obviously he's had a, a fine run in international cricket, um, and it's extremely difficult to keep up the run that he's had. So obviously that level of expectation that he's created is, is always going to be there. And he, he's well aware of it. He knows uh, that when he's in the side, we, we back him to the hilt as we do every other player. And we give guys a, as long as they need to try and get back into form um, when they potentially could be a huge player for us. And today opening the baton for him in a, probably a preferred position, um, he's been class really. Uh, the bowling throughout the series uh, you must be really pleasing as well because you know, you've given Sri Lanka nothing to, to really go at. Yeah, um, I think it's been the, the, our strongest point. Um, obviously, it's worth saying with that there has been a lot on offer, um, both wickets in Cardiff and the wicket here today. Um, I suppose variable bounce in Cardiff um, and then probably two pace nature of the wicket. And today the ball swung for the whole of the time that we bowled and nipped the odd time, which is extremely rare. Um, obviously, conditions that we're used to more so than Sri Lanka are, but taking advantage of them is a, is a, is a big thing. And I thought the bowling unit has been the, the most impressive throughout the series. Mm -hmm. uh, how much do you learn from the series? And uh, are you further forward with your T20 World Cup preparations than you were before um, at the start of the week? Yeah, I think we're always looking to move forward. So we're always looking to take positives that we, we, we've gathered throughout the series. So obviously the bowling unit, the, the fielding has been pretty good as well. Um, batting in the second game, I thought, was outstanding. Um, sorry, first game, not second game. I thought the character we showed in the second game was very good. And then today, I think the partnership between um, Bairstow and Milan was absolutely outstanding. I, I don't think it was an easy wicket to bat on. Uh, the two guys put us in a position where we were able to be quite ambitious with the total that, that we wanted to achieve, but managed to, to put a above par score on, on the board. So a lot of positives. Um, we're not naive. We, we know that we need to improve in, in other areas, potentially that weren't tested in, in the series. Um, but we'll continue to work on them and assess them as honestly as we can. There's been a bit of a comment about how much... Um a difference in quality there is between the sides. Do you have any sympathy for Kusal Pereira and Mickey Arthur and, and maybe any advice you would give to them? Oh, here, I think having been in difficult or through difficult times with either inexperienced teams or just teams that weren't good enough at the time, I think sort of those times don't last. You know, tough people and tough teams do. So certainly in, in, in instances that I've been through, like sticking with plans and believing down the line has, has certainly helped. Okay. Thanks, all of us. Okay, John Etheridge, please. Oh, and I uh, had three different opening pairs in three games. Yeah, is that a good thing? Because it shows the options you have, or would you have preferred to have the same two guys doing it, the sort of role of Claren? No, I, th I, I think, John, throughout, throughout this period of, our, of uh, where we're at, um, certainly with the one days and the t more T20s coming up, uh, sort of the more curveballs that we can be thrown, the better. I mean, I mean it's it's not great that guys are are injured and that then present opportunity for others, but in a way, it 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 has a, a real um, strong backbone if you have replacements for guys who are either injured or being rotated or rested. And for us, <clears throat> for the last four years, that that has worked. You know, there's been instances where I've left myself out, um, or Joss has been missed out, and we've given other guys opportunity. And it's been a method that has worked really well. Um, guys are on board in the change room. They know that there's limited opportunity to stake their claims. So hopefully they can present their best case when possible. Uh, what made you go for David Milan's open today rather than, say, him? Yeah, uh, David's um, open for Middlesex for, for a long time. He's been very successful at it. I know it's his preferred position. Um, you know, he's, he's batted a three for us um, pretty much up until today, unless the, the order has changed for, you know, situations of the game. 
but yeah, I think being his preferred uh, position was a, was a big factor. Yeah. Okay, we've got Matt and then Richard Gibson to finish. Go ahead, Matt. Hello, hi, Owen. Um, wanted to ask about Chris Wokes and David Willey. Um, played two games each and both very economical. How do you sort of assess their performances in the series? Yeah, I think um, they've presented extremely strong cases. Um, everything we've asked of them, they've, they've, they've achieved. So you, you can't fault them one bit. Um, it's always difficult coming in uh, when you've not been involved for a period of time, probably harder for, for Chris than, than Dave. Dave was involved last year. Um, but there is a, a level of pressure that comes with coming into a very strong side. So I think both have, have taken their opportunity. Um, both have offer different things. Um, obviously, the left arm swing angle. Um, I think, that, I suppose... Both of them bowl with the new ball as well, which is the only similarity that, that, that they have. Um, I think you said at the end of the, the second game that um, you saw death bowling as one of the, the, the sort of major work-ons um, as a team. I guess it's probably not been a huge opportunity to test that in this series. Is that um, how you see it? Yeah, it, it's exactly how I see it. I think that the two the most challenging parts of bowling are in the power play and, and at the death. Uh, the power play, we're making inroads with um, the death in this series, we haven't been, you know, tested really. Um, the wickets haven't allowed both sides for me to take advantage of those last four overs that are, the, you know, the hardest to bowl in the game. I think throughout the season, though, we, we might see in you know, the grounds that we shift to in, in some of the one-day games, maybe some of the with 20 games, that certain grounds have better wickets, therefore bowlers under more pressure, which is a good thing. Um, and obviously, not a huge number of games before you have to name a squad. Um, are you expecting to have a, a full-strength squad for the T20 series against Pakistan in a couple of weeks' time? Um, I think that just depends on how guys are travelling. Um, obviously, we have a couple of niggles at the moment. Joss is out currently. Calves are <clears throat> sometimes difficult to come back with. Depends how they, they present themselves in the, in the first week. Um, so we'll be constantly monitoring that. Um, certainly at the moment you know, it's not a priority that Joss is, is 100% fit for the white ball stuff that we're coming through I think you know, given the cricket that he has coming up with um, tests <clears throat> T20 World Cup and then possible ashes down the line I think there are other priorities that he needs to be fit for uh, And just lastly you mentioned the 100 in the presentation um, is there still room for sort of a, a bolter to come through in that and get into the squad or is it going to be some, is the squad realistically going to be the core of players that you've used over the past couple of years? No, I, you know, I always say that guys can always present their best case if they're playing in good competitive cricket, looking at the teams or the squads in the hundred, they're extremely strong. So expect the, the, the standard and, and, and the pressure to be quite high throughout the tournament. Um, so I, yeah, is, is the answer to that. Thanks. Okay, last one, Richard Gibson. Uh, Owen, just a bit of a follow-up on that, actually. Um, you've got this one series coming up against Pakistan. I just wondered, ahead of the preliminary announcement of the squad in mid-September for the, the World Cup, uh, how many sort of open spots you, you would say there might be right now? It's difficult to say, Richard, because there, there, there are injuries. So If everyone was fit. You know, if everybody was fit... I don't think there are many nailed down. There's probably a, a half a dozen guys nailed down. I mean, there's a, right. there's a significant period of time we're dealing with experienced guys within, say, the 17 or 18 that have been involved. Um, there are guys playing in the 100 that, you know, like Time Al Mills, who um, could easily present a case who is an outstanding bowler. Right. Um, and we've always been in communication with him, wanting him to, to you know, get fit, play as much cricket as possible and leave him alone until the World Cup comes because um, playing for Sussex, given the journey that he's been on on a regular basis, is way better for him than trying to get fit for sporadic T20 um, theory throughout the year. So I think he's a good example, um, probably along with a few other guys that could present a really strong case throughout the 100. The competition right now seems to me to be even more intense than it was for the World Cup in 2019, is, is, is that something that you'd agree with? 
Yeah, I would. I, I would. And I think that's down to guys being able to play in competitions around the world and being in high demand. You know, it, it, it really does help guys deal with any pressure or level of expectation of coming in to play in our side at the moment. And uh, yes, we've had this for a number of years now, but it's been playing in a different format. You guys that are bringing transferable skills from Chennai to England, to Mumbai to England, Rajasthan straight to England, same format that they are comfortable at playing. Some people are obviously going to miss out. Um, and it, it, does it get any easier telling those people, you know, no matter what their status, that, that they'll, they'll be missing out? You have to do it obviously two years ago. No, it's it's the hardest part of the job. Thank you. Okay, thanks everyone. Just a reminder, 12 noon tomorrow, Sunday the 27th of June, embargo, so please don't use it until then. And have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Bye-bye.